Recently on my show, I had the chance to interview a man who's known as the fugitive of TikTok. He has an amazing, amazing story, literally detained in multiple prisons and charged with kidnapping his own son, although he actually had legal custody. Yeah, it's a wild story, very tangled web. His real name is Chad Howard, and unfortunately he has a debilitating medical condition right now and he cannot get the help that he needs where he is in hiding currently in the Caribbean. So in hopes of gaining attention for his story to put pressure on the FBI, he is trying to get the word out any way he can. In fact, he's not interested in money at all. He just wants awareness to be able to clear his name. Take a look at this, but for the full-length audio version, you can find it at IkeWingate.com. Well, my name is Chad Hauer. I'm a former Microsoft uh, person with a senior position. And then one day the FBI destroyed my career, my health, and my finances over false allegations, and they have fabricated evidence. And I know how crazy all this sounds, but I have court documents to prove everything I said, including their fabrication of evidence. Take us to the time in which you, you were served notice that something was going on. Yeah, I left the U.S. in early 2001 because I was not happy with the erosion of civil liberties and other reasons. And then in 2009, when I was traveling to Bulgaria, so I lived overseas from early 2001. And I had a senior position at Microsoft in a territory of 85 countries. And I went to Bulgaria to speak at a conference and I got arrested by five armed Interpol agents and was put in five Bulgarian prisons. They tried to extradite me. I have been through three extraditions in multiple countries, and every country they've tried to extradite me from, the FBI has been sent packing because they don't have any, their, their claim is not even credible. They forged my son's birth date. They lied about where I'm from, and they lied about where I was in November 2006, and I have evidence to prove all of this. And the thing is, this was no mistake. The FBI knew what they were doing. They knew they were lying from the get-go when they went into court. They knew they were lying. This was not like, oops, oops, oops. The website makes it sound like a custody dispute, but the indictment of what they released to the newspapers is that I kidnapped a child in November 2006. The problem was I was not in the United States in November 2006. I have not been in the U.S. since June 2006, and when I was there, I was only there for one week, and I was in Boston, not Pennsylvania, where they said the kidnapping occurred. I had full custody of my son because my his mother had kidnapped him. She didn't want to return him. And even then, the Pennsylvania judge is like, nope, you have to return him. She's like, nope, I don't want to. So he sent the police to take him away from her. The judge put him on a plane, and then two months later, the same judge said, I kidnapped him. One day when Howard visited his mother in Erie, Howard's mom didn't want to send him back to his dad. And that's when... I had to order two police officers to physically remove my mother and put me on a plane back to my dad. I mean, that's where the whole kidnapping thing began. So there's four judges so far that have been involved in this kidnapping thing, and they've all upheld it. And... So it can't be a simple mistake on a mistake on a mistake. They're doing this intentionally. Theory two is that because my wife's parents, they were senior engineers and they had access to Russian military secrets. And so the, one of the working theories is that some CIA agent had a wet dream that they could recruit me and possibly turn me on my wife's parents and get Russian military secrets. So they wanted to get me into custody and try and force me to work for them. And I had three intelligence agencies approach me, all U.S. allies, and try and recruit me when I worked for Microsoft. I remarried a Russian citizen in 2002. Her parents okay. were senior engineers in a military factory and had access to high-level military secrets. And so okay. after I married her, after we got engaged, I got put on the KGB watch list. So they had questioned me. They picked me up one time from an airport. And then I also have a record when this got started. The FBI contacted the U.S. Embassy of Moscow and asked the KGB to come check on me, and they did, and I have a court record of that. They admitted that in court. What was the reason for checking on you? Did you, do you know? Well, at that point, they were trying to frame it for kidnapping, but I didn't know that yet, so they said they were doing a child welfare check on my son. But the thing is, and was he they there pretended with you? like they didn't know where he was, and we weren't. they knew exactly where he was the whole time. In fact, the KGB showed up at our door. What are you wanted for currently? Kidnapping. That goes back to 2006? He said he was never kidnapped. He's done news interviews. And not only that, but they say they don't know where we are. His mother has been here to St. Kitts and lost in court in St. Kitts. And after the extradition failed here in the Caribbean, they tried to kidnap my son. And I know how crazy that sounds, but I have document, court documentation showing they tried to kidnap my son when he was 13. And he's done news interviews, and he's talked about the time the FBI tried to kidnap him on foreign soil. And when that happened... The attorney general here expelled a member of the U.S. Embassy and told them never to come back. Wow, so 
The FBI knows, do they know where you are to your knowledge? Oh, yeah. And why don't they yeah. just oh, no, they, they know where I am. They are, it's in court documents. They have tons of court documents of them saying they know exactly where I live and that they've lost three extraditions and that they cannot get me unless I travel off this tiny island. So if I travel anywhere, even to say the island I can see out my window, I will be arrested and I'll be put through the extradition proceedings, which can take anywhere from months to years. And I'll typically be held in a prison during that time. And I have a very serious medical condition which needed addressed years ago. And they're preventing me from getting surgery because I live on an island of 35,000 people. Our hospital here cannot perform the surgery and I need to travel. And the FBI knows I need to travel and they're blocking me from traveling because they want me to die here. But I'm in a lot of pain. I need urgent medical assistance. Even in uh, my kidneys are continuing, I'm continuing to lose kidney function every week. So I need help. I need help. I'm begging. Like to listen to the whole story? Listen to the full episode at www.iquingate.com.